Hi everyone, Morgan here. So we're talking about the Honors Chemistry Unit 1 lecture outline, and we're going to look at the first couple of pages today. So this is all about measurement uh, and metrics. So we have what we call seven base units. Seven units that we use to define all other units. Length. Length is measured in meters, which is abbreviated M. Mass. Mass is measured in kilograms, which is abbreviated kg. Time is measured in seconds, which we abbreviate with an S, and I think most people are familiar with those three. Now, some maybe new ones. Amount of substance is called the mole and sometimes people abbreviate it M-O-L, but most of the time we just write out the word mole. Temperature is measured in Kelvin, which is a capital K without a degree sign. Electric current is measured in the ampere, which most people just call amps, and that is a capital A. And then luminous intensity is measured in the candela, which is abbreviated CD. Now for the purposes of unit one, we're going to measure length, mass, time. Okay, We'll work with meter, kilogram, seconds a lot. We won't be looking at the rest of these until later units throughout the year. Okay. Now also here on page one of this outline, you will see a list of metric prefixes and their values. You are probably pretty familiar with these already, so I don't think I need to talk about them so much, okay? But just in case you needed a good reference, a place to find them, they're right here on the front page. Okay, so let's move on to page number two. Okay. Now, the base units are those seven that I just showed you. You should be familiar with them, okay? All others are based or defined by the base units. All others can come from base units. So we call those derived units. So as an example, we have in a car something like meters per second, where we take meters traveled divided by the number of seconds it takes, or grams per milliliter, okay? That's for density. Now the liter is a good example, okay? A liter is actually equal to a decimeter times a decimeter times a decimeter, which is what we call a decimeter cubed, okay? Because, I'm sorry, that's an L. I should have put a V there. So V is equal to length times width times height. L for liter, V for volume. You think of it either way, really, okay? Now, we have tools that we use in the laboratory to measure these things. Mass. We measure mass with a balance. Balances measure mass. Okay. Scales measure weight, which is in pounds. Okay. We'll leave it to the physics class to talk about those differences. Okay. So mass is measured with a balance. Length. Well, typically we use a ruler because we're dealing with short lengths, but some of you have fancy apps on your phone that can do that, okay? Or you have tape measures. There are a lot of different devices that we have that actually measure length. Time. Now, time is measured with a watch, okay? Or more specifically, we use a stopwatch very often in here to measure time. Volume, we have a lot of options. Most of the time, we use the graduated cylinder. We do not use beakers to measure volume, okay? Those 
beakers are good for holding liquid. They're not terribly good for much else. Okay? Now, all of these tools that we're talking about will have limits as to how much precision their answers can really have in them. Okay? So we're going to have something called a sig fig, a significant figure. A significant figure. They will pop up in the next couple of lectures to talk about how you can't take a ruler just like the typical ruler you might carry around in your backpack or your notebook and measure nanometers with it. That device is not any good for that. Also that you know typical ruler that's one foot long that you carry around is not very good for measuring the length of the you know the United States. <laughs> okay so we have to have the right tool for the right job. Now when we're taking all these measurements and we write down the number with the unit, always a number with a unit, okay? We have to understand that all measurements have an inherent uncertainty. All measurements have uncertainty. And what this means for us is that typically if I write down 10.00 grams. I know the 10 is correct. I know the point 0 is correct. But that second zero, it has some uncertainty. It might be, you know, 10.01 or maybe 9.99. You know, there's some in uncertainty in there. So the last digit is what we refer to as the uncertain digit. Okay, so there you go. That's pages one and two. And we'll tune back into the next video for three and four. Thanks for joining us.